yeah like this today's session is not going to be that heavy because it's just mm. going to be like some basic introduction uh which is why i'm letting you go without using a notebook but next okay. time i expect you to use a notebook uh <clears throat> yeah basically like we can start by just discussing what logic even is because we are learning propositional logic and it has the word logic in it so it's kind of prudent to get understanding of what logic is before we even start um uh, learning it so sparrow if i ask you what do you understand when i say the term logic you can give me like a layman interpretation so what would you say logic is uh it's the rational reasoning provided to to check the validity validity of a argument okay yeah i mean there are like this is not the only like interpretation there are like many interpretations of lo- what logic is and there are different ways in which logic is used um but generally uh, in like if you want like an academically rigorous kind of thing um logic just is the study of arguments that's how simple it is okay um is it's a subdomain of philosophy philosophy has like many subdomains uh yeah. we have metaphysics epistemology ethics aesthetics politics and then it then comes logic logic is one of the subdomains yeah so very simply logic simply is the study of arguments right now it so we are studying arguments but we also need to understand what an argument is because again it's kind of like a weird question to ask people like what does argument mean like we like we argue all the time and we like talk to uh, each other and we ask them like what's your argument for that so it's it, it's kind of obvious to me that there is some understanding of the term argument that is prevalent but um it's it's important to like learn what it actually is so if i ask you what do you construe an argument to be what would you say it's like a a set of rationalized statements mm-hmm. which uh, support a made a claim made hmm. or or go against the claim made right yeah that that's very close to how it's understood in the domain of philosophy like um uh, uh, can i try yeah sure uh, so if i remember my class 12 math correctly it is just a sentence which could be demonstrated to be either true or false hmm so uh well so an argument is not just one sentence uh like sparrow said like an argument is going to have more than one statement so it's an argument in like how is defined in the literature is uh, is is going to be a set of premises which support a given conclusion so that that's simply what an argument there is more stuff to what makes an argument uh, like there could be like uh, there are properties of our, like the each individual premise needs to be a proposition uh, there needs to be at least one uh, unique uh, premise and at least one unique uh, conclusion like you 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 can't just have the same thing uh, as a premise and the conclusion so there are more things but just like a very very um how would i like a minimal definition of an argument simply is a set of premises uh and a conclusion now these premises also have certain attributes like they need to be propositions you can't just have any statement in an argument so there are different kinds of statements like you know if you remember like english grammar classes you have uh imperative statements uh I- i'm not sure like there are different different kinds of statements in english uh but basically not every statement is going to be a proposition proposition is like a uh, it's a subset of statements a statement is just is like any like a complete sentence whatever you whatever comes out of your mouth like uh, some coherent um collection of words 
a string of letters those kinds of things con are uh, considered statements um, so yeah so propositions are going to be like subsets of statements um, and what's what's what makes them different from other statements is the capability that propositions have and that capability is being truth apt and truth aptness just means that if you have that statement that statement ca can take on some truth value whether it's true whether it's false it can take on some truth value that's just what being um, truth apt means so we can start with like exercise number one uh, so i can maybe ask you um, like i can give you a bunch of <coughs> statements and you can tell me whether uh, the statement is a proposition or not so are you are you following till here yeah yeah, yeah. okay uh, you, you know what before we go to the exercise let's do a rewind so what's logic oh you're asking me yeah 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 um it's uh, wait, i we, yeah, even type this down here it is a set of arguments logic is study of arguments study of arguments right yeah yeah and if logic is a study of arguments then what does argument mean so arguments are a set of premises or a state or a set of statements that support the conclusion yeah so you have a set of premises and you have a conclusion and the, there is a relation between the premises and the conclusion that yeah. the premises support the conclusion yeah um, and the, and the the, mm -hmm. the set of propositions should be valid to reach the conclusion oh the, that no we don't don't jump we can we'll okay, go okay. there don't don't okay. jump there mm -hmm. for now an argument simply is a set of premises and a conclusion um mm -hmm. now whether like yeah we can get into validity and soundness later uh, that you, uh, yeah uh but yeah but like for the premises to support co the conclusion it just means that uh actually yeah we'll just get we will uh talk about that later for now argument is just set set of premises and a conclusion okay so we can start exercise mm -hmm. number one i can just give you like i'll just think of some random statements and you tell them if they are propositional or not okay um okay okay Come here, Sparrow. No, that's not that's not proposition. Okay. The sky is blue. That would be a proposition. Okay. Oh my God. That is not. Yeah. Yeah. And then you have. Um... Okay. Well, one second. Yeah, that noise. Is that a proposition? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Although, uh, although, although, oh my God, was not a proposition. It was a claim. And not all <laughs> claims are proposition. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's Ex exclamation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have a bottle on my table. That's that a is a proposition. Okay. Yeah, I think you're getting the hanger. I don't think we need to like do like hundred examples. I I think you get the idea. Yeah. Propositions are just things that can be true or false. Uh, yeah. Whether it's true, whether the proposition actually is true or false is a different question altogether. Uh, that's kind of what we are trying to ascertain when we are using logic and arguments and stuff like that. But that's yeah. Anyway, so so that's basically what a proposition is. Now that's what. So the proposition, the the P in propositional logic stands for propositions. So you are dealing with propositions. You are trying to uh, go from propositions to um, like uh, you, you're trying to see if certain propositions, given certain uh, usages, some symbols, does it does the conclusion actually follow? That's kind of what we are trying to figure out using logic. So. Um, now I can now I, what I'll do is I'll give you a bunch of examples and what you are supposed to do is you need to tell me which so I'm going to give you like a paragraph now you tell me which of the statements are premises and which one is the prem, uh, is the conclusion okay okay so 
Oh, one sec. Uh, I I am not <coughs> sure if it will be better to just copy paste something or type something in the chat or if I should read it out. I think it'll be better to just uh, I'll just type it in the chat. Uh, can you check text for voice? Yeah. By the way, uh, a lot of these examples, I'm either uh, coming up with them on the fly or I'm referring to a book called uh, Introduction to Formal Logic with Philosophical Applications from Russell Marcus. If anyone wants that PDF, I'll send, uh, uh, send uh, Sparrow the PDF. If anyone else also wants the PDF, uh, you can ask me. I'll just I'll just get it from him in that case. Yeah, that's but, uh, right. I did not uh, can't find the channel. Oh, Expo. Text okay. Okay, got voice. it. Wait, wait, wait. Got it. So it's under voice channels. Yeah. Yeah, I can't post the PDF here because piracy and stuff like that. <laughs> but yeah, uh, if you want the book, I can give you the book. Um, and yeah, yeah like. Like as at least for Sparrow, you will need to constantly be. Uh, I'm not sure if you will regularly reference the book, but at least a lot of the stuff is going to be like from the book. So it's better to uh, at least flip the pages if you want a revision or you want some more detailed clarifications, things like that. Uh, it's not a very difficult book. Uh, it's a very simple book to read. I'll send you that. So yeah, we have exercise one here. Um, now you can take a try. You can try and tell me which of them are the premises and which one is the conclusion. So there are mountains on the other side of the room. Is a on Earth also, There are mountains on the other side of the moon. Is a premise. Okay. Um, no rocket has confirmed this, but we can could verify it to be true. Again, is also a premise. Okay. Statements are meaningful if they are verifiable, would be a premise, and therefore the original statement is significant would be a conclusion. Okay. Okay. I'm posting another. We'll do three examples for every exercise. Um, cool. So that is neither too boring nor too uh, uncomprehensive, if you may. So the first sentence, local timelines are temporarily ordered, is the conclusion. Everything else are uh, premises. Right. Why did you... Uh, yeah, okay. I mean, how did you figure that out? Um, because... Like, what was your um, uh, process? I was just going through the... Um, if these let's say let's say these four sentences are jumbled mm -hmm. and if i have to reorder them how would i reorder them reorder them mm -hmm. i would order them in three premises and conclusion so um i think the first statement I, the, the the way i reordered was the second sentence first third sentence second fourth sentence third and first sentence last okay let's we'll we'll uh, we'll do that exercise so let's just uh put it as p1 and then okay so the second one was the first premise right yeah then then the third one was the second premise okay one second i'm gonna call hello yeah i'm gonna call Ah, hi, but missing it. Okay. Okay, bye bye. Yeah, hey, sorry, actually, I put on stress one second. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the third statement was the third premise, and the first statement was the last premise. Wait, wait, one second. So, the oh, third one is. Okay, and then the first one was the conclusion. Oh shit! What the? What did I do? 
you were born. Ah, <laughs> uh, see. Okay, so let's go through this argument. So the first statement is the faster you go, the quicker you get to your destination. As you go faster, time itself becomes compressed. But it is not possible to go fa- go so fast that you get there before you started. Therefore, local timelines are uh, temporarily ordered. Yeah. No, I don't. No, I don't think. Uh, I I wouldn't say it, therefore local. I mean, I think the conclusion doesn't make sense with the three statements. No, oh, that's fine. That's fine. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, 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 yeah okay. that's fine. But basically, whenever oh, you're we are not uh, we are not checking the validity of the uh, conclusion. We are just yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, no, we are, we are not checking right? the soundness. That's a, yeah. That's a like there is a concept like there's a difference between validity and soundness, which will come down uh, come to like once we uh, just get over with this. But uh, for now, yeah, we are not checking if the premises are actually true or whether the ac- argument even is valid. Like I can just tell you straight away that this w- argument right here is not valid. Um, so we can like uh there are there are ways to make it valid but yeah uh right now we are not concerned about that oh uh, one sec one sec mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm back. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I was just saying that we don't need to actually check if the argument is valid or if yeah, the yeah. argument is sound. Mm-hmm. We don't need to check about check that just yet. We will get there. Right now, all I want uh, to be done is to just take all the premises, separate them from the conclusion, and put it in like a, a formal uh, way, which is just to separate it like P one, P two, P three. That's all I want you to do right now. So. Yeah, so let's let's do the next one. I posted another one in Texo Voice. So can you just co- yeah? Oh, are you are you on your PC or yeah, laptop? I'll do it, I'll do it, yeah, I'll do it. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 the first three sentences are premises and the last sentence is the conclusion. Okay, yeah, that's right. So um, I am typing it. Yeah. yeah, fantastic. So yeah, I think like if like yeah, at this point, if you just uh, look at any statement, it it would be pretty much easy to figure out um, what the premises are and what the conclusion is from like natural language to like a formal kind of. Uh, yeah a pattern now of course like in in real life it won't be this easy like <laughs> there are people who will kind of um, intentionally mask their arguments such that you don't actually see a clear inference and that's when uh, formalization comes into the picture you ask them to formalize it uh, in premises and conclusion format so you actually see if the inference follows um will the argument that an argument is required <laughs> <laughs> yeah so what's the meta argument here oh, no, sorry go ahead <laughs> yeah but the, yeah that's kind of the uh, thing so we'll we'll go over this kind of like practical usage maybe later uh, but right now we are what we are just uh, figuring out is assuming that you is like there is a coherent uh, argument in front of you in natural language you will be able to uh, split it out into like premise conclusion format and uh, there are certain like words that english language uses which makes it kind of easy to figure out which is the conclusion which is the premise right so there are words like therefore or yeah. is going to like for in the last example it was so so 
uh, we may infer yeah. that it entails that hence thus yeah. it f- implies that all these kinds of uh, indicators are used in the english language to sort of uh, mark the conclusion and the premises will be marked fr- marked like you know um, because or since um, due to that you know things like that if we if you spot in a, a paragraph that indicates that that particular thing is likely a premise so based on that we can kind of figure out like what the act, what the at least you, what the premises are and what the conclusion is whether it's valid or not again different question we'll get there yeah. so yeah so that was one exercise so uh, the, and this the, uh, until here is very important actually the entire thing is important but like this is kind of like the foundation because whenever you are analyzing or whenever you are presenting your own arguments or if you are analyzing someone else's arguments this is the first step that you will be doing you will actually be thinking which of the statements are premises and which of the propositions is the conclusion or conclusions if you have a multi conclusion kind of argument yeah. uh okay so now what we can do is we can actually go to i'm not sure if i want to go to like uh st- i want to start with like uh the symbols and stuff like that but i can I, i guess we can let's just go to like logical operators um, okay now logical operators are just so now you have like premises and conclusion right um but just if like if you just take a uh, let me just give you the like, okay let's just take the example of the last argument that you uh, put in text for voice right rulers define justice as uh simply making profit from people and just men come off as come off best in business just men refuse to bend the rules uh so j- just men just get less and are despised by their own friends now that w- we can take that as an argument but if you look at the premises now you will see that each premise is one proposition and none of those propositions are actually connected with other propositions yeah. so imagine like uh imagine it like a a plumbing system for water to flow from the first floor to the ground floor you need to have like a tube that connects the first floor to the a uh, ground floor so yeah what logical operators are is just they function as these tubings these pipings that allow this water to go from uh from like the premises to the conclusion because uh that's uh, that's what we are looking for we want like uh the the propositions just because like uh, just because propositions are true does not mean the conclusion necessarily is true um uh, in order for arguments to be like that we need to use like logical connectors and operators and that's where validity comes in so i should just disamb- like e- i think this is a good time to introduce validity uh so validity is just if the premises are true the conclusion has to be true that's just what validity means uh it doesn't care about whether the pra- uh, whether the premises are actually true doesn't care if the conclusion is true or false all validity cares about is i have these propositions which is which uh, is my set of premises if the set of premises is true does the conclusion follow from this set of premises right. and if the answer is yes then that argument is valid now so mm-hmm, it's yeah. not about it's not about checking whether each premise is or each proposition is true or false yeah it's about just checking whether p1 leads to p2 leads to p3 leads to conclusion yeah or p1 p2 p3 together whether they lead to the conclusion yeah, yeah. because sometimes you don't uh, necess- like sometimes you have premises which don't necessarily lead to the next premise yeah it's like and or etc et yeah et yeah so what you're looking at is you're taking the entire set of premises if those premises are true is the conclusion mm-hmm. true and if the answer is yes then the argument is valid if the answer is no then the argument is invalid 
now uh, there are ways to actually show this mathematically like it's not like yeah, you know i'm telling that this argument is valid just take my word for it it's not like that there that we are we have better ways to do that we actually have mathematical uh, ways to show validity and the way we will be showing validity is by using these logical operators um so i yeah so let's just go one by one we'll take each logical operator um and we will see uh what that like how to use that given operator and uh, all that stuff so we will construct truth tables and all that okay so the first operator that we will be dealing with is a negation now if i tell you the term negation what comes to your mind negative and denial like you're denying the right you're rejecting the premise right oh well there are actually two constructs of rejecting so you could reject in the sense that you think it is false or you reject it in the sense that you you are not convinced it is true you, it could be true it could be false so that's so yeah uh, better way to you better uh, terminology to use is to just like say negate negate as in uh, up, up, like you know uh, affirm the opposite so negation would just be like affirming the opposite so if i give you a proposition um sparrow is his god <laughs> <laughs> that's the proposition what would mm. be the negate so uh, there are, yeah so when i negate that proposition all i'm saying is that this proposition is false right the proposition sparrow is his god is false that's all i'm saying when i'm uh, saying yeah. negation so what we could do is we can take uh, oh by the way i should introduce the concept of propositional variables also so um you have so you have premises and conclusion right now if you have if you're dealing with a single proposition that single proposition can be assigned one letter which will stand for that proposition like you don't have to type the entire sentence every time in order to uh, figure out you can yeah. simply mm-hmm. assign like a propositional variable like for example if i take the proposition sparrow is is god i'll just assign some like uh, again this is arbitrary i can just assign it uh, the propositional variable s because like it starts yeah. from s par so s so yeah. i'll just call it s um, it's like declaring variables in python exactly like declaring yeah uh, yeah exactly or yeah or even in algebra when you're saying x equal to 5 or whatever yeah. so you're just declaring that this proposition will be represented by this variable so you have like yeah. propositional variable s for sparo is is got something like that now like mm-hmm. generally people prefer using uh, starting from p so in like in most literature you will find it will be like p implies q q then like, all that you know it, they will start from p and they will go sequentially um but i sometimes like it depends some context depending on context i actually find it uh more intuitive to assign like the first letter of the proposition uh to the propositional way as the propositional variable and go from there so if i have if i just type the uh letter s that is just going to stand for sparrow is is god mm-hmm. now i can now i can add like logical operators to this proposition uh to kind of influence how it is so if i just take this um s right uh now there is going to like we can construct truth tables out of this uh so s is going to be only like one uh propositional variable so if you have like a truth table uh it is only going to be uh is 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 going to be true or false um yeah. so yeah is 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 it going to be true or false right um now if i add a negation symbol in python like you can probably see that um you know you use the exclamation mark right yeah uh yeah. to declare like uh, it, it not equal to not equal to means like uh you put an exclamation mark and then you put a uh you know equal to sign that's not equal to or yeah mm-hmm. things like that so 
the negation symbol in logic is just like that in fact when you're like uh, when you're writing out arguments if you don't have like logical symbol keyboard what you could simply do is you could uh, you could either use a tilde or you can use yeah. a an exclamation mark or you can use the log the negation symbol all of them mean the same thing they mean negation now yeah. mm-hmm. when i apply the negation symbol to any proposition what happens is the truth value of the proposition will automatically become false so if s is true then not s is false so these are like negation um so it could be not s or not s or uh hold on or not s so negation is just like a gun right so like s holding a gun yeah it's a it's okay. a s holding a gun that's right yeah but the gun has to be pointing like towards the left okay. yeah that was left yeah yeah so that's that's just a negation symbol so if if i just say not s you just take that to be like s is false that's just what negation means yeah. Right. um yeah and there are like again in natural language there are signifiers of negation um <laughs> left wing doesn't have guns right wing has guns <laughs> Well, I, I think that's a good way to remember. No, <laughs> depends on the country. <laughs> Some countries left wing is hard guns. <laughs> But yeah, uh, in like um, in, in like in the um, what was I gonna say? I I kind of forgot. But yeah, uh, in English language, you have uh, signifiers like terms, phrases, motifs that you. commonly come across which signify that there is a proposition is being negated right so a negation is going to be like not or is going to be it's not the case that this is the most common in uh, in the literature it's not the case that or it is not true that it is false that um these are kind of like signifiers motifs that english language has there are similar analo- analogous um phrases and motifs in maybe hindi aisa nahi hai um like you know you can figure out that like um even yeah, kind of an- uh, analogize this to hindi and you can figure out that there mm-hmm. are like these words like uh that signify that proposition is being negated right so now the negation is called a unary operator is a unary operator and it's called unary because a negation symbol urinary leda u u unary i know i know i know i know <laughs> unary unary operator and it's called a unary operator because um actually let, uh, let, have you heard of unary and binary yeah so unary just means it applies to a single proposition one, mm-hmm. one proposition unary yeah. the un in unary stands for one the b by in binary stands for two um yeah so unary will just be it applies to a single proposition and mm-hmm. it is if i am not wrong it is the only yeah it is the only logical operator which is unary negation symbol is the only yeah. unary operator Okay. all the other operators that we will be discussing all of them are binary so they can combine two or more uh actually yeah they they combine like two propositions yeah. uh yeah so yeah so we can so that's negation so i can uh, what i can do is i can maybe give you like a s- uh, set of propositions and i'll ask you to translate those into the negations of those um propositions so Sparrow will attend a wedding. Sparrow will not attend a wedding. Yeah. Um Sparrow is wearing formal clothes. Sparrow is not wearing formal clothes. Yeah. So, okay, wait, one one more. Sparrow is not a race god. 
taro is his god <laughs> yeah so what what we have done so that example is called a double negation double negation yeah. so, so like minus i minus two. right so i already had a premise a proposition which had a not in it you just put another not so that uh, it just negated that first negation and basically two negations cancel each other it just becomes like a not a, no, it just becomes not negated um, yeah. so yeah, i think you're following that so that's the simplest operator that is out there which is just uh, the negation symbol then we can go over to uh, conjunction so conjunction is a binary operator um, mm-hmm. we can look at yeah binary operators such as going to be proposition uh, they're going to connect two propositions now they are uh, now i need to show you like a truth table of um, conjunction so that we can start like uh, getting it because this is when we are actually getting into truth table stuff so let me just pull up the truth table for conjunction create table Ooh, one second let me just find a copy and pasta so do you if you see this there is uh, going to be like um, a truth table so i mm-hmm. I, n- i need to first tell you how to construct truth, truth tables so what you do is uh, since again conjunction is going to be a binary operator so you need two propositions two and propositions. we are going to just use p and q just uh, just to maintain like convention we can use mm-hmm. anything it doesn't matter but yeah, p yeah. and q like yeah uh, so what you do is uh, you have two propositions right p and q so what you do is for the column of p you repeat t two times which is the number of times it has been repeated yeah uh with a number of propositions that you have and then below that you uh, do f f two times so th- these are just signifying like the truth value so you have t uh, t and f and f now the number of times you do that depends on how many propositions there are in the argument right now we just have two um, so we are just going for t t f f and for the second column of uh, q what you're just going to do is you're going to alternate between t f and B- basically what you yeah. do is you do 2 minus 1 and then you do t f t f t f yeah so okay uh wow so Uh, okay are you following that much yeah, yeah okay one, one second i'm getting a call yeah sorry hello hotel yeah hey ba you hotel yeah oh hi ba guys ba okay okay ayo mm. <laughs> what's up yeah so actually you know what i'll i'll not use ncrt truth tables i will use the ones that are given in the book <laughs> uh which is the the book uh, the russell marcus book that i mentioned before yeah um uh, much better because i know ncrt will give people ptsd i don't want to give people ptsd so <laughs> yeah anyway so this is like the basic truth table for negation uh, so negation would just be like you have 
alpha alpha is the proposition if alpha is true or one negation would just be zero or f yeah and if you have uh a, the proposition is false the negation of that will just be true mm. okay now coming back we have conjunction so conjunction uh, this is the truth table for conjunction so conjun again conjunction has a bunch of symbols right like there are many many different symbols that can be used to represent a conjunction conjunction can be represented uh, using uh, this you can uh, hold on this one or this one or just a dot so these three symbols are generally uh, used for okay. representing conjunction uh, yeah so when i'm generally typing on my phone i'll just use the ampersand symbol but if i'm typing on my keyboard i have conjunction like the conjunction symbol so i just use that mm. uh okay so which is like the most widely understood symbol for conjunction oh widely understood well all of them are i guess equally understood but i guess okay. uh this one the cap one is more widely used uh the dot one maybe not as much um and the ampersand is actually never used like it's just used uh in like informally um but yeah it's also one of the symbols that represents an amp uh, a conjunction okay so okay. Yeah. yeah so what we have over here is uh, we have like alpha and beta these are representing the propositions you can take p and q doesn't matter uh and here you have like true true false false and in uh, in like uh, beta you have true false true false they have con they, they have constructed like uh, the variables and then the middle column is yeah, representing middle, yeah. the conjunction the conjunction yeah so a conjunction is true only when both the both are uh, propositions are true okay so if even one of them is false it is false the conjunction itself is false okay. and so it's like an and right so only if both yes ands are true it is okay got it yeah, yeah. just like just like in programming uh if both the conditions are true only then the con like only then it will be like yeah. executed if it yeah. e if even one of them is false it will be uh it won't be executed so the same same thing applies here in fact propositional logic applies to like programming everything etc so it, it it ultimately just boils down to this basic stuff yeah so okay so if i just i can uh, yeah uh, so this is just the truth table for a conjunction so uh, whenever you see a conjunction to uh, to to find out if it is true all you need to do is just check individual premises if both of them are true the conjunction is true if even one is false the conjunction is false now at this point i should also remind you that uh this is also one proposition p and q is can be construed as one proposition okay it has two atomic propositions which it, it, it is comprised of two in atomic propositions like uh but ultimately even this is a proposition because you can read this like in natural language in natural language you can read uh, i am going to eat apples and bananas so this sounds like one statement right yeah but i'm going to eat apples i'm going to eat bananas exactly it's made up of two atomic propositions i'm going to eat apples and uh, it's connected by that and and yeah the other one is i'm going to eat banana so you have two mm -hmm. atomic propositions in that one statement so although you can consider this entire thing as one statement it's still made up of two smaller statements mm -hmm. uh yeah so sometimes what people do is for uh, like if the argument becomes too big uh sometimes for this for for like pragmatic like when you're trying to prove uh arguments validity or something like that yeah. what you what people generally do is uh not generally like sometimes it uh, uh, like you need to do that 
you can just take p and q to rep to as a pro as a, and assign it to a different propositional variable maybe like a so whenever i'm using a i mean p and q mm -hmm. so that's how like you can use uh, propositional variables like that to even talk about conjunctions uh okay so i guess that's that's uh, i think that's enough for like conjunction uh, we can go to like negation uh, no negation is done conjunction is yeah, done yeah, negation yeah, is yeah. done we will go to disjunction okay cool now disjunction is just simply uh, instead of like like conjunction is and disjunction means or mm -hmm. now disjunction just is going to be like there are again english has indicators of conjunction and disjunction so uh, conjunction yeah. will be and uh, also like both these are kind of like conjunctions for disjunction yeah. it will be like i uh, or either this that you know unless something like that so these are like indicators of disjunction so you could have like um one second yeah so yeah we, we have like disjunction disjunction would just uh, so whenever you re you're reading conjunction and disjunction you you just read them as like and or or so or will be like i can post the truth table of or uh hold on truth table where is truth table wait a minute where did that go oh there it is got it will this be a prop p and q or q implies r yes that is a proposition because ultimately like premises have to be propositions otherwise it's not an argument um so p and q or q implies wait r. you said premises need to have propositions proposition uh, premises need to be propositions themselves need to be prop yeah prop. if they are not propositions so what is between a premise and a proposition oh a premise Uh, uh, there could be a proposition which is not part of an argument a premise is just going to be a proposition which is part of an argument okay so like if i could just say sky is blue that's just a proposition yeah but if i use sky is blue in an argument so something like if the sky is blue then the sky is reflecting blue wavelength uh, uh, of light the sky is blue therefore the sky is reflecting blue wavelength of light then mm -hmm. in that case it is a premise so premises are propositions but premises are propositions are like like they are they are a kind of proposition which are part of an argument okay got it yeah so not all propositions are premises uh, but all premises are propositions uh yeah so you have this like a uh, truth table for disjunction so what you can do is like so again the uh, the variables remain constant see it's alpha and beta the truth table uh, values remain same you have 1 and 1 0 and 0 1 0 1 0 and yeah. you have a uh, okay a, a disjunction is false only when both the propositions both are, are false, false. Right. if either one is true the disjunct is true right Yeah. So when I say I am eating apples or bananas, that that statement is true even if I eat apples but don't eat bananas. That yeah. statement is also true when I eat bananas but don't eat apples. Yeah. But if I don't eat apples and I don't eat bananas, then the statement is false. False. Because I said I am going to eat uh, either of them. Yeah. But I am not. Okay. So that that's actually false. Yeah. Um. so that's that's just 
what a disjunction is going to be now um what uh, we are we can move towards like um what we can i'm not sure if i want to go to material implication maybe material implication we can go next time uh what we can do right now is uh, do a bunch of exercises like uh, i'll i'll give you like some propositions and ask you to translate them into like a uh, symbolic form so on your on your keyboard you can use like the tilde symbol the and symbol um uh, and the uh v letter v v okay okay so we'll we'll do three propositional mm. uh, or sorry we'll do three operators today and uh we can use those okay so let's and is what uh, ampersand and is both conjunction and uh, disjunction no disjunction is you can use the letter v oh and and you can also use tilde no tilde is negation oh so okay oh you just put the three okay he's you, giving the negation. three different uh, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. you can use tilde ampersand and uh, letter v for negation sorry uh, disjunction um okay Yeah, but you can also use ampersand for ampersand is and you can't use it for no. or ha huh, so what is okay wait these three you given tilde is negation ampersand is and mm-hmm. uh, or conjunction and uh, v is the function yes yeah okay so you can use these symbols and i'll tell you like i'll give you like propositions and you just translate them to a symbolic form Yeah okay super Aputa is a boy Asai what do you want me to do here I just convert it to symbolic form Okay Yeah Um Discord is dangerous <laughs> people should not use discord <laughs> oh i mean technically you're not yeah. wrong yeah but you could make it like negation of r right you yeah it's better to just put it as a negation of r okay yeah it's not wrong but yeah um Okay. Now what we'll do is we'll take um two of these like uh let's take p le- let's take a and b propositional variables a and b and I- I'll give you like a symbolic form you ca- you translate it to uh, like proposition like uh, natural language basically. Mm. Wait, how many did we discuss? Uh I think we took 3 of them, right? Yeah, yeah 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 three of them yeah yeah so it's a b and c okay uh mm this one now you can translate this to natural language
people should use discord even though it is dangerous or people should oh, it's good in natural language oh, oh my god but that let me try doing that yeah the sparrow is doing distribution yes, don't don't distribute good um so you see just just plug in the propositional uh, just plug in the propositions and plug in the operators don't do anything else we'll we'll go there wait aren't we supposed to convert it to natural language yeah 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 Okay. Yeah, uh, converting to natural language would just be like uh, taking the propositions and plugging them into th uh, the propositional variable, and preserving the. Oh, uh, sorry, I was muted. Yeah, like you can convert it to natural language, but I'm not asking you to make a new proposition. I'm just I gave you like a form, I uh, A or B and C. I'm just asking you to like plug in the propositions into the propositional variables and give me the the final translation from symbolic form to natural language. We can give an example so I understand what you mean because I don't understand what. Okay, you mean. yeah, we can start with an example. So So I'm just copy pasting this one over here. So what I'm simply doing is I'm taking this Aputa is a boy. I'm putting that or B is Discord is dangerous and uh, people should use Discord. Okay, a putter is a boy, mm -hmm. or Discord is a boy, and people should use Discord. Yeah, so I gave you a symbolic form. You are just plugging in the propositions into that form, and uh, that's that's basically all you have to. Do. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you can. I like. You don't need to. Uh, you can though if you want to. But generally, when when you're talking in natural language, you just use a comma. You don't use brackets. Okay, so let's see. Let's do this. Um, either the sky is blue or sky is orange, and we are talking on Discord now. Yeah, that's fine. Now let's try this one. Uh, see or let's try this one. You don't need to stick to the previous proposition. You can, you can use any proposition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Ideally, the best practice is whenever you're using a negation, just say it is not the case instead of just putting like you can sometimes confuse people if you put like a not inside the statement so if you just yeah. put the negation outside the statement it will you know that is the negation operator it is not the case that people should use to, uh yeah this is not wrong but yeah it's just like a convention thing
people should not do it is not the case that dairy is ethical or it is not the case that you are wait and or all what is it even or no yeah huh. it is not the case that dairy is ethical or it is not the case that you are smart <laughs> okay uh actually so so this is like again so there are actually different two different kinds of disjunctions what we discussed right now is called an inclusive disjunction there is another kind of disjunction which is called exclusive disjunction and that disjunction is true only when uh like it it is false whenever both have the same truth value like it is false when both of them are true uh it is also false when both of them are false it is only true when mm-hmm. one of them is false and the other is uh, true got it yeah so something like either i am a human or uh i am an alien mm-hmm. now those both of those things cannot both be true so instead yeah. of using you can you can still use a um, an inclusive disjunction but in this ca- in this scenario i think it's more opt uh, uh, it's more like appropriate to use uh, the exclusive disjunction because you're talking about something uh, a proposition where b- uh, the atomic propositions are incompatible uh yeah like either you are an ethical person or you are a carnist so it's it's not like you can you can have both of them at the same time yeah yeah um so it's bet- so in that in that context it's just better to use like an exclusive disjunction rather than an inclusive mm-hmm. disjunction uh there is a symbol for exclusive disjunction which i don't uh wait where did i put an exclusive disjunction symbol i need to find my script <laughs> that's fine we can uh, i can do that later but anyway yeah so we have uh, that let's do this this is an exclusive disjunction yeah that's what you wanted right uh it's just exclusive disjunction is just the disjunction symbol with an underline that's all uh, disjunction uh, sorry exclusive disjunction is okay it is not the case that dairy is ethical and it is not the case oh no this is wrong i'll tell you why it is wrong later when we go to rules of uh uh will a rules of replacement okay um so should i have rather just said it is not the case that dairy is ethical and meat dairy and meat yes it is not the mm-hmm. case oh again and yeah yeah you yeah, will i think i even i guess they made the same mistake Oh no 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 I guess I got it right. <laughs> Sparrow can you uh, can you check the can you check other Agastya's uh it's not the case of dairy is ethical or it is not the case of meat is ethical. Why is that right and why is yours wrong? is it because a negation of a disjunction is a conjunction a uh, negation of a disjunction will be two negated disjuncts 
that's uh, we, that's a little bit uh, further down the line but what you can simply yeah, see is just junction flip is junction due to negation yeah that's, that's yeah. what i but yeah there is an e- there is an easier way to visualize this maybe if i draw the truth table it will be easier to visualize it right? exactly so if you just take um yeah why don't you try drawing the truth table for this since we covered truth table today let's just get that done also so basically i will take um the uh the truth the conjunction truth table so mm-hmm. 1100110 um if first both are first true, declare the first declare uh, a and b the truth the, yeah de- declaring in the sense that you just draw the columns for them yeah you just draw the column for uh, I, draw. I don't have anything to draw oh you can do that on discord also one second hold on you can do okay. it like um, a b Oh yeah, yeah. You can use that too. You can use paint. Worst paint now. The cons Mac. <laughs> oh Mac. Uh. <laughs> maybe maybe you know what the best thing to do is let me actually open a MySQL and let's create a table. Flexing on the screen. Just bring it up. Draw table and I'm going to do P. Yo, bro, I've never done this. Q. Um, is that right? Why don't you uh, show me the screen so that I can? See yeah, if you are doing it right. Classic MS Paint the browser with extra features. You see? Yeah. And then. So. But I can't see the. I can see the Discord. What did you? Share the browser, not just the chat. Oh, with this Discord now, it's virtual. Uh, I have to first minimize both of them. They can't be full screens. No, there we go. Yes. Oh, no, 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 no. First one. I, I did Ulta. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> so, it should be true. It should be false. It be false. It should be false. And now the negation of conjunction would be, this would be 1 become 0, 0 become 1, 1 and 1. And this is nothing but the same truth table as uh, this junction. But ulta because you did it ulta. No, it is not of p and uh, not of p or not of q. You would have to do not of p ka table, not of q ka table, and do an or of that. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought I thought this would be an easy way to erase everything. Yeah, control A and just drag it out of the screen. Um. Ooh, interesting. Okay. By the way, this will be the first. I mean, uh, I didn't intend to bring this up like so quickly, but this will be the first proof that you will be showing. Mm. Yeah. So P. Not P. Q. Not Q. P. Oh, wait, no. Correct, correct, correct. Oh, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. 
edit or install. And control Z. This is what you asked for. <laughs> not P or not Q. No, 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 or, or. Not Q, not Q. Hey, it's a pretty lot. I put a bracket outside. Oh, you don't need to. You don't need to put a bracket. Ah, that's what I mean. That's why I was removing it. Not P or not, not Q. Q. So there's one, 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 one zero, 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 zero. One, zero, one, zero. Not P will be zero, zero, one, one. Not Q will be zero one zero one. So now zero zero. Um, this is this is disjunction. So when both are false, it is false. When one of them is false, it is false. When one of them is mm. false, it is. Yeah, both are false. Oh wait, no, 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 other one, other one, my God. One of them is true. It is true. And one is true, is true, is true. Yeah. Um, so yeah, when when is this false? It's only false when both of them are false. Yeah. And it's true in every other case. Yeah. And that's pretty much what, uh, like, uh, wait one second. What was the question? You need to show that not P and Q is the same as no. Um, oh yeah i mean yeah this is fine so you you can figure out you figured out how to do like a truth table but if you want to show that not p and q, okay uh, make more columns well, uh, just make another table where uh, you're doing p and q and then not of p and q and just compare with the last column that yes just do okay, a so PNQ. PNQ, if both are true, then it is true. If yeah. one of them is false, it is false. 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 Yeah. And then not of PNQ. Uh, mm -hmm. so zero. Yeah. Both of these are equal. Eureka! <laughs> so here, that's what the so you have proved like the logical equivalence of not P and Q and not P or not Q. Those two mm -hmm. statements are logically equivalent. Right. So when when somebody is using it in arguments, you can use them interchangeably. And it won't affect the truth. They are truth preserving even if they are interchanged. Like the okay. conclusion will okay. not be affected regardless of how you use them. Whether you use it in a conjunction form or whether you do it as a disjunction form. Right, yeah. Okay. Um, now I guess we can do something much more simpler than this. Um, let me see if there are any exercises in this book mm, yeah i guess yeah i guess this is uh, fine like um for now i guess this is fine we can go to implication and um, material implication next time because that kind of stuff is like a little more uh, how do I say this like uh, th there is more scope of confusion in like material implication than mm. uh, negation or conjunction etc so yeah I guess it's that's good enough for this time do you have any if you have any questions 
we can address those. No questions, sir. This is just straightforward. Yeah. By the way, what you just derived was the De Morgan's law. <laughs> De Morgan's law. I didn't. I I I had no intention of making you derive uh, De Morgan's law until later. But it's fine. Mm-hmm. We got. We did it in the heat of the moment, which is, which has its own merits. Heat is always good. Yeah. Being in the heat is always good. Yeah. Yeah. That's what she said. <laughs> That's what he said to Sparrow. <laughs> But okay, yeah, I guess that's that's pretty much it for the first class. Next time, get a book so that you don't have to draw this pathetic MS Paint stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to use tables, I'll just like use my SQL. Uh, yeah, but we are going to use more than just tables. Like you'll you'll have to like. do multi sequence argument proofs and all that you can't like it's hard to do that on mysql and all that so better to do it on pen and paper or it's for mm. cool then yeah. see you Thursday. oh one yeah, second let me stop the recording then you can ask okay.